If you're anything like me, then there are times where you feel exhausted and drained for seemingly no reason. Sometimes there is a very real underlying factor, and sometimes there just isn't. Hey there, my name is Bubba Stalkup. I'm the CEO, president, and founder here at Love Thy Nerd, and it is my distinct honor and privilege today to be your host for Bible Thump. Now, what I would hope that we would understand from our time together here is that your exhaustion is linked to more than just your physical state. While you absolutely do get tired from doing things like working outside, going to the gym, or maybe even helping your friends move all weekend long, there's more to it than that. Because when you're tired, when you're exhausted, you take a nap, go eat a snack, and then we get right back to business. But what about those times, okay? What about those times when you come home from a long day at work and you have no more mental space? Like you've literally used everything up and you have nothing left for the people around you. Maybe you had a hard day at school where you used all of your brain cells to remember the difference between a cell wall and the Great Wall of China. Or maybe you think about those moments where you just feel like you're at the end of yourself and really all you want to do is just go home and binge Doctor Who or just lay down and do absolutely nothing. Christian or not, again, hear me out here. You do not have to be a Christian to accept this as truth. These moments usually come from times of unfulfillment. The more mundane the task the less meaning it seems to have, and thus, the more it drains us. All of us appreciate feeling like we are adding value to the spaces and or the people or the situations that we find ourselves in, right? Who among us doesn't like that? So if we see that there is an actual purpose in the things that we're doing, whether immediately through impact or over time through legacy, either one of those things, then we're actually more likely to complete that task all the way through, finish it, and to finish it well. And the more value that we actually see in these things that we do, the more healthy we actually are, not just physically, but also in a mental and spiritual space. Now, I'm not trying to preach a health or wealth gospel here, I promise you that. But what I am gonna tell you is that your mental state does help to shape your spiritual and physical states as well. You see, John 10.10 says this. This is the BLT, the Bubba Living Translation here. That Jesus came to this earth so that we might be able to have life to the fullest and find that life in and through Jesus Christ. I truly believe that finding our purpose, not just mine personally, but also you as well, finding our purpose, those things that make us tick, as well as the things that we are uniquely gifted by God to do, help to create this process where we find this abundant life in Jesus Christ. And as I'm thinking about this, I'm a nerd. I don't know if you are or not, but I absolutely am a nerd, and I cannot help but think about Captain America Steve Rogers and his famous line, I can do this all day. Did you know that every single time he said that, he was in the midst of what was quite possibly the hardest thing that, that he had ever done up until that point? Let's take a look at some of those things. So he said it when he was getting absolutely whooped in an alley in the first Captain America, the first Avengers movie by the war movie heckler. He said, I can do this all day. He also said it when he was being interrogated by Red Skull and Hydra. He also said it when he was fighting Iron Man in order to try and save the Winter Soldier, his best friend, Bucky Rogers. He also said it to himself from the future when he thought his future self was Loki. It's a whole thing. If you haven't watched it, just go and watch it. The MCU is wild. Agent Carter, the Captain America of the multiverse. She even said this when she was fighting off Scarlet Witch in order to save the entirety of said multiverse. Hard things being done in each of these instances. And the thing, the point that I'm trying to make here is this. Captain America, Captain Carter, whomever you want to look at here, they found tremendous courage, vigor, strength, and endurance, even in the face of certain death and uncertainty of completing their own mission. 
in the things that they were there to do and they knew that they were uniquely qualified to do. I truly believe that much like our friends, the captains, that when you and I are doing the very thing that we are called to do, we are here on this earth with purpose to do, some people call it your flow. When you are in that flow, you and I will get a second wind in situations where other people are more likely to just roll over or quit. So for those of us that are Christians, call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ, and we put our trust and our hope in Him, place our faith in Jesus Christ, our purposes are actually pretty clearly stated that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and also to love our neighbors as ourself. And while that is pretty crystal clear, right? Like that's what we're supposed to do. The way that we go about doing those things are actually open to our interpretation. And it's been my experience that when you and I understand what Patrick Lencioni would call our working geniuses, those things that get us out of bed, the things that we're the best in the world at, those things that drive us, when we understand those things and we're working within them, we are way more likely to not just do things, but do things well. When you find those things, when you're doing those things and you're able to offer God the best of yourself instead of just the scraps, you excel. Maybe you're finding yourself stuck in a mission field or a service opportunity or even a ministry where you do not feel like you're making any kind of a positive impact. If that's you, I want to encourage you right now to find the space where you are making a positive impact. It could even be the space that you're in right now. But if it's not, seek it out and find it. Be in the space where you affect the most positive change. When you and I are working inside of our giftings, I truly believe that this is where Isaiah 40, 31 really comes alive and God is showing his perfect handiwork through us. It says this, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So you have to ask yourself, are you seeking the things that God has laid out for you? Or are you allowing somebody else to tell you what you should be doing and to determine those things for you? Find the things that give you life rather than the things that drain it from you. And use those as ways to love him with absolutely every single thing that you have and to also see other people as people that Jesus Christ died for in the same way that he died for you. That is how you can love them well. Real quick, before we get out of here, I would love to leave you with some practical applications to help you find the things that are actually giving you life rather than draining and maybe encourage you to move forward in those things. So this is a method that uh, you can do literally anytime. You ask yourself two simple questions in four areas of your life. This is called the RPMs, the RPMS method. And it's actually based off of Luke chapter 2, 52, which reads this. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. All you have to do is ask two simple questions in four areas of your life. Those questions are this, what fills you and what drains you. And you ask those questions in these four areas, relationally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So again, going back to our verse, Luke 2, 52, Jesus grew in wisdom, mentally, stature, physically, favor with God, spiritually, and men, relationally. You can do these things at any frequency that you want to. Um, you can do them daily, weekly, monthly, whatever your current load allows for. And you can also increase those as your capacity increases. And friends, that's it. From there, you simply focus on the things that bring you life rather than the things that drain it from you. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have to do hard things. It doesn't mean that you're not going to do things or engage in situations that drain life from you on an irregular or even a regular basis. But what it does mean is now you have the tools biblically and also mentally to combat those things. So you can think 
critically and Christianly about the situations that you find yourself in, and you are now equipped with a way to move forward. Ask yourself, what fills me, what drains me in those areas, and focus on them even when you're doing hard things. I love Colossians 3.17. This helps me every day of my life. Colossians 3.17 says this, And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. If you're able to see absolutely every single thing that you do, every conversation you have, every mundane task that you engage in, every life-draining or giving moment as worship to God, as service to Him, as a way to bring glory to His name and not your own, Friends, you're going to be able to look at those situations and with a smile on your face, say the very same thing that Steve Rogers, our Captain America said, I can do this all day. Hey, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time today with me here on Bible Thump. I want to encourage you to check out our website if you haven't already at lovethynerd.com for more of these Bible Thump devotionals. We also have other videos, podcasts, articles, and resources that we'd love to share with you. And you can check us out on social media at Love Thy Nerd on all major platforms. We'd also love for you to come and watch us and hang out with us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash lovethynerd, when and if you're able. Hey, thank you so much again for your time. And if no one else tells you this, just remember it's true. Jesus loves you, nerd.